Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? One of the things I think is fascinating is that the more that I do this work, the more I study, the more that I research, actually, the more questions that start to come up. And so even sometimes when I'm in conversation with someone as incredible as Dr. Leaf, I will say, what do you think about that? This is just my opinion. And it was actually incredibly reaffirming and powerful for her to say, yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's part of you know, I think for me, part of one of the things I really enjoy about getting to have these conversations is I get a mirror for these thoughts, these concepts, these ideas of what I believe it means to go through this trauma healing journey, what I believe that it means to overcome and to create who you are. So in the, in the show, and I've said this before, but I wanted to go into it a little bit again, just to create clarity seems like a lot of people were confused and I do talk pretty fast. So I wanted to dive into it. Trial, childhood trauma and abuse is the theft of our identity because when we are in our adolescence, when we are growing up in our developmental years, we are taking and making meaning of all the stimulus that is happening around us. We're always measuring our environment. We're always looking for creating a meaning around the circumstances and situations that are happening in our lives. And what happens is as we go through, if we are unfortunate enough to experience childhood trauma and abuse, whether that's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, or sexual, we come to this place in which we start to, because we have to develop by nature and biology, a sense of awareness for survival, we start to measure all of the things that happen and occur in our life through the scope of two ways. One, survival. Are we going to be safe or not? And two is to make meaning of it. Now, one of the really, I would say, difficult aspects that we don't, well, I didn't, I'll use me as an example. One of the very difficult things that I did not fully and entirely understand until I was deep into my 30s, and it didn't actually really sit in until early in my 30s, excuse me, deep in my 20s, early in my 30s, is that when we go through trauma and abuse, the very thing that happens is we actually retreat from self in order to bend, chameleon, and placate for survival. Now, what happens is because that becomes a survival mechanism, we stop being who we are. Because one of the most dangerous things that you can do is be you. That's the assessment that your brain is making. And so as your brain is making that assessment and looking at it and going, every time I show up as myself, every time I move towards my wants, my needs, my interests, my beliefs, then I get hurt. There's punishment, there's pain, there's something that happens, there's a ramification. Well, because the brain's first service is survival, it looks at that and says, okay, I don't want to do these things anymore. But what happens when you are doing things that are in alignment with who you are? You are trying to be you. And so your brain says, wait a second, if I show up as myself, this is dangerous. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get hurt. I better not do that. And in fact, what I should do is the opposite. And what I should do is exactly what other people need me to do so that in order to have survival in my life and have longevity, I will not be me. And so what happens now you're going through this in a survival mechanism, it's a biological response to the stressors and the stimulus of abuse. And what happens on the other side of that is we make meaning of that experience and that gets tied into our worth into our identity and into our self. A lot of the experiences that I had growing up, having a hyper abusive childhood was that I felt no worth. I felt no value, no validation in the world, except through the external possessions, cars, money, hookups, drugs, alcohol, food, whatever it was, that is how I felt validation. It was all external. What I didn't understand in my youth was that the external things were never going to fill me up. And in fact, it is the internal parts of us and dealing with all of the messiness, all the ugliness, all of the pain, all the suffering, all the guilt, all the shame by looking at it and recognizing that those thoughts and those beliefs are not who we are and that we do not have to be those thoughts or beliefs leads us down this path in which we can start to take ownership. 